I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. Here we go. We're reading God's word. We're doing what we heard. We're spreading God's love from John chapter 3rd. We're memorizing scripture. We don't hide it in our hearts. And when we're old, we will never depart. Why? I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KP, 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 set. I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KP, 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 set. I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. Watch and see this who we start to be. KB kids affecting the world around us positively. We are growing day by day. We are watching what we say. We are kingdom builder kids and we're here to pave the way. Hey, we are kingdom builders, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, Hey kids, why are we still standing here? It's this way to KB. Good morning, KB kids, and welcome to worship today. I am Miss D, and guess what? It is volume number 81. Yes, it is volume number 81, and I am so excited that you are joining me today for virtual worship. If this is your first time, you are welcome. You are the VIP today, and I know that you are going to be blessed. And if you are a returner, welcome back to you. You know how we do, so you know we are in for a good time. Guys, it is volume number 81. I cannot believe it, but we have been here for 81 straight weeks. We have not taken a week off. So if you have been with us for 81 straight weeks, give yourself a hand. Yes, give yourself a hand. Thank you so much for joining us each and every week. I love joining you, so I hope that you are enjoying uh, tuning in each and every week. All right, so we are on part six of our YouTube series. Yes, we are talking about who God created us to be and not who the world says we can be, we should be, or that we ought to be. We want to hear from God and God only about our lives. So last week we dived into a parable and we talked about the foolish builder and the wise builder. We talked about not waiting to the last minute to do things so that you're hurried and you don't do them well. We gave the example of, you know, brushing your teeth and going to the dentist. If you wait to brush your teeth until right before you go to the dentist, guess what? Your parents are in for a lot of moolah and your teeth are probably hurting by now. So making sure that we are being diligent and doing what we're supposed to do, continuing to walk in the path that God gives us is what we are aiming for. To make sure that we are wise builders who built his house, took his time, on the rock and not a foolish builder who just wanted a party so he built his house really fast. All right, so today we're gonna dive into another parable and talking about loving each other, loving our neighbor. I'm sure you can figure out what it is, but I won't spoil it just in case you can't. We'll get to that in just a little bit. All right, first and foremost, we have to say our confessions. Why, Miss D? I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says we can have whatsoever we say. And when we say things out of our mouths that line up with the word of God, it can come to pass. And that's what I want for my life. I want blessings for my life. I want blessings for your life and the lives of your family members. So we had another friend stop by and give us um, our confessions today. So if you're seated, go ahead and stand up and let's say our confessions together. I love God. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, the bright Holy Spirit, the thing that the Spirit, the Word of God, the Word of God, and the people of God. Better than I love anything else in all this world. But in the whole world of God, so I can stand the gate to the street. The house of salvation, the shoes of peace, the book of truth, the breath of 
spirit of righteousness, the seed of faith, and the sword of the spirit, and the Lord of God. And I use my armor to knock down, crush, and to stop anything in the Lord of God. I am a winner. Want to be a leader? This is the cup of free! The three men and the pastor of righteousness. Jesus means it. Why? Because I'm about to see. Because by JBK, see you in another video. Awesome. Great job, guys. I hope that you are truly believing what you're saying and not just going through the motions because I truly believe everything that we confess each and every week for myself and for you as well. All right, it is praise and worship time. Yes, it is time to lift Jesus higher and give God praise, dance a little, sing a little, have some fun. I know in my house, we love to dance along with the song, so hopefully you guys get into it just as much as we do. All right, one of our first songs is an oldie but a goodie. I love superhero because that who's, that is who God is to us. He is our superhero. I love me some Batman. But guess what? He's better than Batman, as the song says. All right, let's sing it together. Superhero. I love this song because it reminds us that no matter where we are in life, that God has given us the ability to overcome our situation. He has given us the ability to overcome our problems with his help. So let's sing it together. We have overcome. Thanks 
speak to God who always causes us to triumph in His name. Thanks be to God who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in His name. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. worship song because it just reminds us that the name of Jesus is that. It's a beautiful name. We can call on him and he said he would answer us and show us great and awesome things that we didn't even think about. I love that about him. So let's sing it together. What a beautiful name it is.
Guys, I hope you had fun worshiping with us today. I hope you're not too tired. If you are, take a deep breath, but we're going to get right into our scripture memory. Yes, it is time to hide the word of God in our hearts. And remember what we talked about hiding. Yes, we are pushing it deep down in there so no one can take it from us. And that's why we're continuing with the same verse throughout our series to make sure we know and understand our scripture. It is Ephesians 2 verse 10. So let's go ahead and sing our verse song and then we'll come back and practice. Awesome. I hope the song is helping you guys learn the scripture even faster. Because I know when my when I was little, my mom used to put scriptures to songs and it really helped me to memorize the song and commit it to memory. And that's why I still know a lot of scriptures today because she did that for me. Thanks, mom. All right, let's go ahead and practice it. Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in in them. That's right. So we, we've we kind of broken down this verse over the weeks. We talked about being that masterpiece, that workmanship. We talked about being created for good works. We talked about beforehand. Now the final part is that we should walk in in them. And that's where this scripture really comes in to our theme um, over the last few weeks. We are talking about who we were created to be, who God placed us, us on this earth to be. So in this scripture, it says that we are his masterpiece. We are created for good works beforehand that we should walk in them. What do you do when you walk in them? You're doing something, right? You're doing something. You're walking. You're being active. You're being pro active. You are doing the things that God called you on this earth to be right now. Even as I talk to you, I am walking in the things that God created for miss D beforehand. And right now I'm walking in them. I'm walking in them by talking with you, by sharing the gospel and the love of Christ with everyone who is watching. So this is the end of our scripture. And it tells us that we have to put all the things that God has placed into us. Now we have to be, um, 
We have to go out and do it. We have to put this to action. Now, he doesn't say we're a masterpiece created for good works beforehand, so we should say, oh, wow, thanks, God, and sit on it. Oh, wow, thanks, God, and uh, walk away. No, so we should walk in them. We want to go forward. We have to now take the things that God has placed inside of you, those gifts, those talents, those desires, those things that you're good at. Yeah, God gave those to you. Why? Not for you to say, ha, look at me, look at me, look what I can do. No, not at all. Those things are to bring glory to God. So when God gave me a love for children and children's ministry, this is what he put inside of me so I can now share it with others. Yeah, those things that you're good at. If you're good at sports, if you're good at art, if you're good at school, whatever it is that you are good at. Now we have to take those good works that God prepared beforehand. Now we have to walk in them. So I am encouraging you guys. We have a few more weeks of our um, YouTube series, but I want to make sure that you guys are starting to think about how you can use the gifts and the talents and the, the things that God placed inside of you to walk forward, to move forward in your life, even as a child. You can do these, you can be an encourager even as a child. You can share the love of Christ with someone even as a child. You can sit with someone at lunch who's lonely even as a child. Yeah, there's so many things you can do at your age. So let's say it one more time, Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Guys, I, cre I, I encourage you to walk in your God-given gifts today. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, it is time for announcements. Yes, we haven't had announcements in the last couple of weeks because we really haven't had a lot of extra things going on. But I am super excited because it is the first Sunday in October. And do you know what that means? Yes, it's getting colder, but that's not what I want to announce. I want to announce that Hallelujah Night is coming up. You know, I really wanted to announce it like two or three weeks before, but you know, I get super excited and then I start announcing things like months ahead of time, kind of like I do VBS. But it is officially like four weeks away, so I'm pretty sure this is an okay time to announce it. Guys, um, October 31st this year comes on a Sunday. So we're going to do things a little bit different just to make sure um, that everybody can participate um, who wants to is we are going to have our hallelujah night in the daytime. Yep, we're going to have it during our 1030 service. It's going to be different. We're not going to have our regular um Sunday school classes, we are going to have Hallelujah Night during our service. All the games, all the prizes, all the candy, all the fun. You name it, we are going to do it, but we're just going to do it during the day on Sunday. So you want to make sure August 31st, you are here early, early, early. You know, you can get here as early as 10 a.m. So make sure you are early because you don't want to miss out on any of the fun. We want you guys to dress up in your favorite costumes. Make sure they're nice and, um, and kosher for everybody. We don't want to scare too many people, right? Okay, but make sure you come in your costume because we're going to have a costume contest and all that jazz. It is going to be a blast. I can't wait to see you guys. I am preparing, um, oh, the team is preparing. We're gonna have a lot of fun, so make sure you are there August 31st at 10.30 a.m. All right, let's go ahead and do our confessions for offering. If your parents text to give, they can use the information on the screen. Let's go ahead and say our confessions together. Say, Father, I thank you as we obey your word in giving and receiving. I thank you that all our needs are met and that we are blessed to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, guys, it is lesson time. Now, today for lesson time, 
I talked about, we are talking about um, loving others and taking care of others and not just looking inwardly and saying, okay, what do I need? But looking outward and seeing the needs of others. You know, it can be very easy sometimes to get caught up in what do I need or what do I want or what do I like? And we miss all the people around us that are in need of our help and help that we can give, but we're so busy, you know, focus inward that we don't see it. Now, today we're talking about another parable, but before we do that, you know, um, if you guys are in school, I'm sure you've had, um, maybe a fire drill before, right? So like when a fire alarm goes off, like what's your response? Now, unless your teachers had said, oh, there's a fire drill, so if the alarm goes off, you know, don't panic, we're just going to walk outside, meet in order. But what if you're somewhere and the fire alarm goes off and it wasn't a drill? Or maybe even the smoke alarm goes off um, in your house, the smoke detector goes off in your house, and no one's cooking, you know, no, you don't know what's going on, what are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to check around. Immediately, you're going to get up. You're going to check around. Um, if you're an adult, you're going to go and make sure, you know, everybody in the house is up and out. If you're a kid, you're going to follow your parents' instructions and get out of the house. Are you going to be like, huh, it's a fire smoke alarm, whatever. I'm going to finish watching my show. No, you're going to get up and you're going to do something immediately. You're going to check for danger, check for smoke, check for fire, and you are going to react immediately. You're not going to wait. You're not going to take your time. You're not going to say, oh, whatever. Somebody else will do it. No, you're going to make sure that you and your loved ones are safe. Now today in our story, um, the, we have uh, characters in our story that were not really concerned about the needs of others. And only one man reacted right away and, to, and, and offered to help as much as he could. All right, before I get too far into our story, let's go ahead and check out our animated video and then we'll be back and finish up our lesson. The Miracle of Mercy, The Good Samaritan. This is Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait. The man then asked, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. Ah! They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> by chance, a priest came along. <laughs> but when he saw the man lying there, ah, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, whoa! Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. Please help. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Oh. Yeah. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, 
I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Whoa, you know, what I love about this story is that the man, the Samaritan, who actually stopped to help was the enemy of the guy he helped. Yeah, they never got along because the Samaritans and the Jews were not friends. They were enemies. They were rivals. They didn't like each other. But the Samaritan knew that he was blessed and that he had the capacity to help the injured man. And so it didn't matter who the man was, where he was from. He knew that he could help and he knew that he had to help. Now you have the Levi and the priest and all the other people that pass by on the other side, like, oh, I'm late for my meeting, so I have to go. Or, oh, I don't want to get dirty. I just put on clean clothes. I have to go. Oh, I've been purified. I can't help him. Somebody else will. And it's so important that when we can help others, that we do what we can. Not everybody has what we have. We are blessed. We are, um, you know, th the Lord has been faithful to us. Not so that we can say, look what the Lord has done for me and me only. No, look what the Lord has done so I can bless somebody else. We always confess that we are blessed to be a blessing to other people. And that's what the Samaritan did. So I encourage you guys today that if you see someone in need and it's a need that you think that you can help out with, now, depending on what that need is, make sure you talk to your parents first. Don't just start giving out things or, you know, doing things unless you ask your parents. But, you know, if you see a need in school and someone needs help picking up their things, you can stop and help them, right? Yeah, or if you see a need, you know, someone's struggling or lost, you know, uh, maybe they're new to the school and they don't know where to go, you could stop and help them, right? It's important that we stop and we help and not assume someone else is going to get to it eventually. We, just like we would a fire alarm or a smoke detector, we want to react to needs immediately. We are blessed to be a blessing to other people. We are called to love one another, and that's what we want to do each and every opportunity that we have. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to get to our puppet friends. They have a hilarious take. I'm pretty sure Jared is going to react to our story today. So let's check them out and see what they have to say. Hey YouTube, what's up? I'm Jared and welcome to Jared Reacts to the Bible. Why am I reacting to the Bible? Two reasons. One, it turns out I'm no good at making crafts with squishies. And two, I want to know if the Bible's really as cool as some people tell me it is. Like our friend Alice here. Say hi, Alice. Hi, Jared. Alice, what amazing story are we reacting to today? Jared, this is the story of the Good Samaritan. Ah, yes. I know what that is. A Samaritan is someone who stops to help people, right? Maybe to you and me, but in Jesus' time, a Samaritan was not a popular guy. He was the kind of person the people listening to Jesus wouldn't give the time of day. That's not very neighborly. No, it's not. But that's what makes the end of this story so amazing. Well, let's get to it. It all started with a man being robbed on a very dangerous road. The robbers beat him and left him in the ditch to die. Yikes. I do not like where this is going. Then, a religious man came walking by. Ah, excellent. Help is on the way. But instead of helping, the man kept on walking. He what? I don't believe it. He's a man of God, and he just left that man to die? Don't worry, Jared. Another man of God came up right behind him. Finally, someone willing to do the right thing. Unfortunately, he just walked on right by as well. He did? Goodness, Alice, why would you tell me this story? It's not my story. Jesus told this story. But what is with these guys? Do they think they're too important to help someone? Yeah, they kind of do. Well, they're wrong. Someone needs to put their ego aside and help this guy. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. A third man comes by, and this man is the Samaritan. Is he the good Samaritan? He is, and he doesn't hesitate to stop and help the man. Finally, some help. But wait a minute. 
You told me the Samaritans were considered to be bad people. They were, by the people Jesus told this story. So why would Jesus make the bad guy the good guy? He did it to show us that everyone needs to help others, no matter who they are. It should be automatic. Kind of like those videos on Facebook that start playing on their own, even if you don't click them. You're getting the idea, Jared. When it comes to doing good, we should all be on autoplay. We just do it, no matter who it is, no matter what they need. I think you like this story after all. I do, but I'd also like to have a word with the two guys that left that poor man to die. It's only a story, Jared. Let it go. All right. I guess that's all the time we have for today. I'm Jared, she's Alice, and we'll react to another Bible story next week. All right, guys, we are back. It is game time. Yes, it is game time. And today, we're going to play a little beanbag toss. Yeah, so if you don't have any beanbags, that's okay. I have some beanbags here, uh, different sizes, different colors. Uh, it really doesn't matter. So whatever you have, um, if you don't have any beanbags, uh, maybe ask your mom if you can put maybe some beans or some rice in a, in a couple of socks or something like that. You know, t a couple of your, uh, lar some larger tube socks, tie them up and you can toss them that way. All right. And I also have my uh, bean bag, um, like a it's called really kind of cornhole bowl uh, board that we're going to use today um, to throw our bean bags into. Now you can use just like a garbage can or a couple of buckets or whatever you can um, find to aim your bean bags. So this is uh, one of the games that we're going to have at. Um, at Hallelujah Night, so make sure that um, you're practicing this so you can make sure you win lots of prizes. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys 60 seconds to go ahead and grab some materials, grab some bean bags if you have them, some old socks, you can even roll up socks, you don't necessarily have to put anything into them. Um, small balls, whatever you have, you can even use ping pong balls, we use those a lot. So whatever you have you, to play the game, go ahead and grab it and we'll be right back and we'll play our game. Watch and see this who we strive to be KB kids affecting the world around us Positively we are growing day by day We are watching what we say We are kingdom builder kids and we're here to pave the way Hey, we are kingdom builders Building up the kingdom of the Lord I am a kingdom builder KB, KB, KB say I am a kingdom builder Building up the kingdom of the Lord I am a kingdom builder KB, KB, KB say I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. One more time, we are. I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB Kids, out. Wheaton Christian Center, Kingdom Builders, Children's Ministry. All right, guys, I hope that you grab some materials. Uh, you have something, uh, a board, uh, some kind of target that you can throw into them, uh, some type of bean bags, and you are ready to go. All right, when the music starts, we're going to go and try and toss as many of our items into our target before time is up. All right, are you guys ready? All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to stand back just a little bit. The game begins in three, three two, two, one. one. Oh, all right. A little bit harder. All right, I got one, two, three. Oh, I'm doing well. Oh, I'm gonna go for the eyes. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, I missed that. Oh, yeah, it went through. I have four so far, four so far. All right, gotta toss it lightly. Oh, yes, I love it. Four, five, I think. Okay, that didn't go in. These little ones are easy. Six. Oh. I got about 30 seconds. Oh no. Seven. All right, seven. All right, if you are running out of bean bags like I am, feel free to go grab them. Out. And uh, keep playing, keep playing. Here we go. I have seven so far. Oh no, that one's stuck on the tooth. Eight. Nine. Oh, ten. Oh, I'm good at this game. Eleven. Twelve. Oh. All right, I one got stuck in the tooth, um, so I will take the 12, though. I still got it. I still got that, you know, um, that smooth stroke. All right, we'll be right back with lesson recap. 
All right, guys, we are back and it is lesson recap time. I hope you guys were paying attention and you are ready to answer our questions based on our lesson today. It might have been in the puppet friends, it might have been the animated video, it might have been in our object lesson or our regular lesson that you can find the answers. You just never can tell, so you gotta be paying attention to all of the above. All right, here it is, question number one. A man was traveling on the road to the city of A, Rome, B, Nazareth, C, Jericho. Ooh, where was he? You know, this reminds me of a song that we used to sing um, in Sunday school. He was on the Jericho. Yes, Jericho Road. Yes, the man was on his way to Jericho when he got jumped and beat up. All right, here it is, question number two. While on the road, the man, A, was robbed, B, robbed someone, C, got lost. Hmm, what happened to him when he was on the road? Yeah, he got robbed. They stole that man's money. Yes, he got robbed. Um, he got beat up. It's actually not really that funny. All right, let's go ahead to question number three. Question number three says, a priest and a Levite passed by the man and blank. A, called for help. B, took care of the man. C, kept on walking. Talk about bogus. You know, even if they had called for help, that would have been better. They didn't even call for help. They didn't even tell anybody at their destination. Oh, uh, we saw a guy. Can you guys help him? No, they just left him. They walked away. No bueno, no bueno. All right, here it is, question number four. Hopefully you guys are doing well. The only person who helped the man was A, an innkeeper, B, the Samaritan, or C, Jesus. I know this is a trick question and everybody wants to answer Jesus, but this time the correct answer is not Jesus. It is B, the Samaritan. Yes, uh, the innkeeper helped at the end, but only because the Samaritan paid him. But the Samaritan stopped on his own accord to help the man and make sure that he got um, the help that he needed and got home and to a destination so that he could get well. All right, here it is, question number five for all the marbles, bragging rights in your home, at least for the week. Here it is. For people who love Jesus, helping others should be A, optional, B, automatic, or C, psh, that's someone else's problem. What do you guys think? Yes, just how you react to a fire alarm, emergency, um, you know, um, us as adults, as we are driving down the road, we see an ambulance, a police car, a fire engine, what are we going to do? We're automatically going to pull off on off to the side. Why? Because that's what we know to do. Our reaction is immediate. So when we see people in need, our action, reaction should be automatic. It should be immediate. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't feel like it. Oh, I'm tired. We are called to love others, and one way that we love others is by helping them when they are in need. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Well, guys, great job. I hope you were five for five today. I hope you guys had a wonderful time, as much fun as I did in Katie Virtual Worship, Volume 81. Let's go ahead and pray and dismiss for today. Father, I thank you for um, our worship session today. I thank you that you were right here with us, leading us and guiding us and teaching us who you created us to be. I pray that you help us to walk in those things that you have called us to do, that you help us to be the men and women of God that you have called us to be. I pray protection over all of us throughout the week until we meet again next week. We love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, Amen, amen, amen. Well, guys, I so appreciate you joining me today for worship. I hope you have a wonderful week. Can't wait to see you next week for Volume 82. Bye for now. You know I have to say that, right? Of course. Watch and see this who we start to be. KB kids affecting the world around us positively. We are growing day by day. We are watching what we say. We are kingdom builder kids and we're here to pave the way. Hey, we are kingdom builders. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, KB, KB say. I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder. 
building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. One more time, we are. I am a kingdom builder. Building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB Kids out. Wheaton Christian Center, Kingdom Builders, Children's Ministry.